Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the first live event on day three of National Apprenticeship Week. It is all going so well so far, so let's keep it rolling. I'm your host, Ali from Career Map TV, and it's my pleasure to introduce the team from Galford Try, who will be running through what opportunities they have from an apprenticeship and early careers perspective. We'll hear about the apprentices, they, what they have on offer. The recruitment process will also get the inside track from current apprentices who will share their experiences with us. There will be a Q&A at the end of the webinar. So feel free to leave any questions in the chat and Q&A box and we'll run through them after the session has ended. So uh, don't worry if you do miss any information, the session is recorded and will be uh, on our website and our YouTube as well to watch in the foreseeable future. So without further ado, I'll hand over to the Galford Tri team and let them commence with their session. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us bright and early today to hear a little bit about Gallup for Try and what we offer in an early career space and what it's kind of like and being part of the, the Gallup for Try team. Um, I'm Megan. I'm the early careers manager at Gallup for Try, so I look after all things early careers. Um, specifically today, I'm excited to talk to you about the, the trainee and apprentice opportunities that we have and what we offer for trainees and apprentices as well um, and delighted to be joined by two of the team Harriet and James who are on the screen there and um, I'll allow them to introduce themselves properly later as we go through the presentation and um, so yeah really excited to to share some of the details we've got today so what we're going to talk about in the next sort of 40 minutes or so um, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, our, our, our values and our culture um, a little bit about our business. So just share with you what Gallup of Try is like as a company. You might not have heard of us before. Um, and just talk a wee bit about, um, like I say, what it's like to work with us and be part of the team. Um, I'll then hand over to Harriet who will talk a bit about our training development programme and our offering for our trainees and share with you sort of the exciting stuff that you would get involved with if, if you joined us and completed an apprenticeship um, as part of the team. And then most excitingly, probably, sorry Harriet, <laughs> um, we're going to hear from James, um, who's one of our current trainees. And I think it's such a great um, thing to have someone who's sort of living and breathing it right now. So James will share his experience um, so far of being part of the GT team and what he's experienced as a, as a trainee as well. Um, and then, like we mentioned already, we'll have a Q&A session at the end. So please don't be shy. Um, if you do want to share your, your questions in the chat, we'd appreciate it. We want to hear from you. This is Bill Hawking, he's our chief exec. Um, I've got him on the screen obviously because he is our chief exec, but to talk a wee bit about um, Bill's passion for early careers. So I think what's really important um, is that message comes straight from the top of our organisation. So literally, you know, Bill, head of, head of uh, Gala for Try, um, really, really buys into early careers. When I say early careers, that includes trainees, apprentices, um, graduate, you know, all, all the different areas of early careers that are so important to sort of shaping our business. I say this message quite a lot and it is a wee bit cheesy, but if we bring the right people into our business now, they will shape the future of Gallifrey Try, um, and that's really exciting. So we have people who've joined us at a trainee, apprentice level, a graduate level, who have gone on to be leaders in our business, and I, I think that's pretty cool. Um, so we're a values-driven organisation. I've got our um, values on the left hand slide, uh, side of the slide there um, and I think I just wanted to call them out because if you are interested in joining us and understanding what it's like to, to work with Gala for Try, our values um, are, are such a key part of that. Everything we do and the way that we work is really sort of truly driven by our values. Um, if, if you do go through any sort of recruitment process with us, you'll see, you'll see that, that they're really truly values-driven organisation. So agile working, this is a really key part of our culture. Um, I think what we recognised, um, I mean, I've actually been with the organisation 10 years, um, which is terrifying. <laughs> so it's been a past 10 years. Um, and I've seen that we've worked in a kind of agile and flexible way the whole time I've been here, which if you rewind 10 years, that was actually really forward thinking at that time. Um, but what, what we did, um, actually a few years ago, now 2018, we formalised that and we recognised as a business 
that um, the traditional nine to five doesn't always work, doesn't always work for getting that really important work-life balance. So like I say, in 2018, we formalised and we said, okay, this is our formal approach to, to agile working. And what that means is, um, as the slide sort of says there, it's empowering you to choose the way you work. We're really output driven rather than, um, you know, focusing on presenteeism. We want people to um, come to work, enjoy what they do, get the most out of work because it is a big part of what we do. You know, you do spend a lot of time at work. We want you to be happy. <laughs> um, but then also have that really great work-life balance because we appreciate that it's obviously such an important part um, of people's happiness to have that, that really positive work-life balance. So working in, a, in an agile and a flexible way allows people to have that um, and creates a really inclusive working environment as well. So I mentioned that we did this um, sort of, I've seen it for years and years, but even formally we've done this um, since 2018, which does actually predate the pandemic as well. So what was quite nice when the pandemic hit, which obviously none of us expected, we were pretty well set up for it. So we were already working in a, in a pretty sort of agile and flexible way. Um, so this has probably been accelerated since 2020, but we were already well on that journey. And um, so that was that was quite good. Um, that's a key part of our culture. That's why I wanted to highlight that. Well-being, so quite closely linked to um, you know work-life balance and all that really important stuff. We are a people-oriented business, so we're really um, supportive and, and want people to have obviously a really good um, sort of well-being um, at, at work. Um, the few things that I wanted to call out on this um, that I think is a really nice part of our offering is uh, volunteering days, first of all. So each year um, we get two paid volunteering days, um, which we really encourage um, everyone across our business. So this isn't just early careers, this isn't just apprentices. Everyone in our business gets these two volunteering days. So whether um, you already volunteer in some capacity, we'll give you the two days to do that. Um, or you want to, you want to give back to your local community, um, we encourage you to, to sort of seek out volunteering opportunities and, and, and do that and, and give back. Um, I think that's quite a nice thing because, you know, we, we work in our communities as a construction company, you know, we're building projects in our communities. So it's really important to us to kind of give back um, at the same time as doing that. Um, mental health awareness is another one I wanted to, to pull out from this slide. On the slide there, I've got the We Mates in Mind logo, so the black and yellow circle, kind of at the bottom-ish there. Um, Mates in Mind is a mental health charity, um, specifically a construction mental health charity, and we have worked with them for years. Um, the mental health um, across uh, the world is, is very important, but particularly in construction, I think there's still um, somewhat of a stigma attached to talking about mental health. And what we at Gallifrey try, we, we recognise that and we want to try and change that. So every single person who joins our organisation, so like I say, this is much wider than the early careers population that we're talking about today. Every single individual who joins our organisation goes through the first module of Mates in Mind, which is called Start the Conversation. As the name suggests, it's about starting that conversation um, and just, just showing that we as an organisation have a really open um, attitude to, to talking about mental health and we encourage people to talk about their mental health and there's no stigma and you shouldn't feel that you can't talk about that sort of thing in the workplace so like I say every single person goes through that to make sure that there's that awareness around that's our, that's our culture and that's our approach to to kind of mental health and we, we want you to talk about it we want you to be open we want you to start that conversation so that was just two things um, I wanted to pull out from the from the slide there on well-being, but like I say, it's that it's that it's that culture piece around how um, how important our, our well-being is, our, our work-life balance, and I think that what we find in it, it's an absolute fact if people are happier, they're more productive, they work better, and um, so it's kind of a win-win if people are if people are happier and feel they have that support, um, then then it's it's a win-win for everyone, really, and that was the two sort of key things about the, the culture and what it's like to be part of the Gallifrey Tri team that I wanted to call out. Um, a couple of things here. So we're really proud to be um, awarded gold status from the 5% Club. 5% Club are um, 
an organisation that are focused on companies who have earn and learn programmes. So it means that we have at least um, 5% of our workforce who are on earn and learn programmes and we're awarded gold membership for the second time in a row um, this year. So that's pretty exciting. Um, and then another um, sort of shameless plug for our awards as well is the, the job crowd. Um, we've been voted um, sort of in the top top companies for apprentices to work for this year and for a number of years actually as well and um, so really proud to be kind of awarded these kind of things in this space again probably just reiterating the message right at the start from bill it is an important part of our business and um, has been and will continue to be um, a few things on the slide there I've got and um, you know if you if you join us as part of our early careers programs we do have our competitive salary and um, sort of starting salary excellent holiday allowance um, structured training frameworks, I'm not going to go into any detail on that because Harriet's going to pick that up when she talks about our offering. But from my perspective, just to say that we have a really good offering for our trainees, for our apprentices to make sure that you're, you're supported and get the training and development that you need. Like I say, Harriet will go into detail on that. Um, and then a couple of other things there around the private medical insurance um, that you'd be entitled to and a contributory pension scheme as well so lots of lots of good reasons on why you'd like to work with us join our team in 2023 so we're really excited to be going live with our training and apprentices roles really soon and um, we're just finalizing that and we'll go live in the next couple of weeks the application process for that is is designed to be straightforward it's a it's a really um sort of straightforward um, online application we will capture a few contact details, that sort of thing. And then we will ask for a CV as well. So we'll want you to upload a CV. My sort of top tip um, for, for uploading a CV, we appreciate at this at this stage in your career, um, if you are a school leaver, though I appreciate that we have other, other groups who are, who are interested in our training and apprentice roles. Um, but if you are a school leaver, maybe you feel you don't have much experience, that's okay. Um, that's absolutely okay. We we expect that um, across all of our early career, uh, career roles, we couldn't expect you to have experience. So don't worry about that. Please don't let that put you off. What we want to see is um, why you'd like to join our team, why you'd like to be part of the Gallifer Tri business and team. Um, and just a wee statement on your CV really stands out. So just something, why, why was it you thought I'm going to apply to Gallifer Tri? Um, was it because you saw um, some of our key projects and you thought those really exciting? I'd love to work on those. Um, was it our values? Did you think right, those values really resonate with me? That's the sort of company I'd like to work with. Um, whatever reason that is, that's just a couple that I've just sort of pulled out the top of my head there. But whatever it was that you thought, OK, I'm going to apply to that company and here's why. A very brief statement at the top of your CV, if, if you've got it structured as a sort of personal statement at the top, really stands out on an application and um, because like I say for often for our trainee and apprentice roles and um, we can't and we wouldn't expect you to have that experience and um, also in terms of qualifications from a Gallifer Tri perspective we don't have sort of strict requirements here any roles that did require um, specific qualifications we'd note that on the job ad but generally we're we're quite flexible what what does matter is if it's a particular academic course that you want to do as part of um, obviously your apprenticeship as part of your training and um, you would need the the minimum requirements that that academic qualification ask for and um, just naturally because that's a requirement of getting onto the college or university course depending on the level so like I say that's that's the online application and a wee top tip from me on, on what we're looking for um, and then it would just be a local interview so you don't have a, a sort of lengthy or scary um, interview process we absolutely w want to encourage people to come <laughs> come meet us find out about us and um, I always talk about the, the interview process being a, a two-way process and I think that's probably a, a quite key message from us obviously interviews are designed to get to know you a bit better we do want to ask you questions about you and um, tell us about your skills um, and, and experiences that sort of thing and that's important from our perspective but also, I think it's really important from your perspective, you know, you're making a decision to join an organisation and um, to do to do an academic qualification and in line with your career aspirations. And I think that an interview process should be like I say that that two way um, process so that you find out a bit more about us as well. 
make sure that we're a good fit. It's important that you're a good fit for us and our team, but also really important that, that we're a good fit for you and what you're looking for from, from an employer, from a career, from a first, sort of first step, if it is your first step into this world of work. Um, yeah, and then like I say, it's just, just that local interview. Um, sorry, there we go. Uh, yes, at this point, I'm going to hand over to Harriet, who's going to go into much more detail on our trainee offering. Thanks, Megan. Um, yeah, so morning, everyone. My name's Harriet. I am the Learning and Development Manager here at Galliford Try. So I am just going to go through um, for all of you just what our on-programme offering is here in terms of the, the trainee programme. So as you can see here, our trainee offering is actually split out into three separate sections. So um, in terms of sort of starting your trainee journey here, you'll have three separate elements that you'll almost work through. So just to take you through the first one, um, it's our structured training framework. So when you start on our training pro trainee programme, you'll be issued with the structured training framework. So the structured training framework will take you through various different experiential secondments. So these will be anything from estimating, planning, site, purchasing, um, and also take you through general competencies such as risk management, cash flow forecasts and negotiation skills. So the structured tra training frameworks will, um, Megan, can you just take over for me for a second? Oh. I was on mute. <laughs> the structured training frameworks are designed um, to give you that really introductory um, excuse me, that really introductory different parts of our business. So as Harriet just called out there, um, we have the different areas across our business. And what we feel when you join us as a trainee on an apprenticeship, it's really important to um, get that, that breadth of knowledge. So the structure training frameworks will show you the different parts of our business and give you that introduction and that wider understanding um, of what it is. Okay. Thanks, Megan. Yeah, no, no, I'm sorry, I was just losing my breath a bit then. So yeah, so the structured training framework of Megan kindly took over for me then will take you through the de various different areas. So the structured training frameworks will actually be um, looked after by your line manager. So they will take you through your, your structured training framework plan. So you'll find that throughout your trainee experience, you'll get various different offerings. Um, so you'll be able to get lots of different experience in different areas. So that'll help build up various different technical skills as well as different behavioral skills as well. So when you go through your program, this structured training framework will be signed off by your line manager at various different points. And you'll also have your mentor that will be assigned to you at the start of your training program as well. So you'll find that you'll have quite a lot of support from sort of start to finish. So alongside that as well, you'll have your academic qualification. So your academic qualification will be through your college or university. So this will be your academic studies that you'll take part in. So that will be building up your knowledge, skills and behaviours in whichever apprenticeship you decide to go down. Um, so you'll obviously be getting that at the end of your trainee programme as well. Now, alongside that, Galliford Try have actually developed our own bespoke development programme. So in terms of that, there will be three different modules that you will take part in as part of your trainee development programme. So we've been trying to make these as sort of exciting as possible for you, because obviously you've got your academic side of things, which is going to give you your academic qualification. Um, you'll also have your structured training framework, which is going to give you various different sort of technical skills and abilities. So we've really tried to make this element quite a fun experience, fingers crossed. So um, the three modules, your first module, um, it's delivered by um, some extra armed forces who are our training providers. Um, so this is quite um, a team building experience that you'll be offered as part of part of your programme. So it's a two day experience event that you'll take part in um, and you'll be doing various different hands on activities, which I think Megan has seen from the graduate development programme side of things. Um, so it'll be all about working collaboratively effective teamwork and problem solving. So you'll get to know various different trainees who are also on your programme as well. Um, you'll then have a module two, which will bring all of you together again. Um, and that will be ran by a member of the Galliford Tri team. Um, and then finally, module three. And I think this is probably 
most exciting one, and Megan's probably going to agree with me here. Um, so you'll actually get to, uh, it's called Turn to Starboard, Star, I can't say it, Starboard, um, and you'll get to board the yacht Spirit of Falmouth. Um, so it's a three day event that you'll get to take part in, um, and you'll be getting involved in all aspects of sailing. So it really is quite a fun activity get, to get involved with. So um, across the whole trainee offering, we've got quite a lot to offer you in terms of building your behaviours and your skills. So yeah, I think that hopefully gives you quite a good, ah, and there it is for you as well. So you can see there <laughs> in a bit more detail all the different modules that we offer for you as well. Yeah, so that's that's the three modules that Harriet just um, talked to. They're obviously called module one, module two, module three, with, with their associated names as well. And just one thing that I wanted to to talk about because I think it's really quite exciting um, is the Early Careers Welcome event. So we have an event um, every year when our uh, grad population join us, when our trainee and apprentice um, population join us. It's normally October, so um, the, the the date varies a little bit each year, but it's normally October. Um, and this is a big welcome event and I'm really excited that after a couple of years of it being virtual, for obvious reasons, <laughs> we're now going back in person. Um, and what we do is we bring our whole early careers population together to, to, to meet, to do, to, to do a welcome, funnily enough. We have key people from the business, um, so senior people from the exec team who share um, you know, about our, our, our vision and values and all that really kind of exciting stuff to get that um, induction i suppose so that you understand our business what we're about and um, you would importantly meet your other you know your fellow trainees and apprentices of course you'd meet all the grads as well because it's early careers as a, as a whole and i think it's just a really good kick off to your program and um, just quite a nice start to um you know welcome to the team kind of thing um so yeah that was all i wanted to kind of add on that i think if i just slip Next slide. Yes, so it's on to James now. James, over to you. Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm James. I'm a trainee QS. I've been with GT about 11 months now, and I come from no experience of the construction industry. So GT have taken the time to show me and also provide me with modules to get me up to speed. So I've been doing tendering and contract training uh, to help me gather my knowledge on it and also the development framework program that has allowed me to see uh, the next steps I need to take in order to progress my career. Um, also I want to talk about collaboration. GT always it, it's, it's an amazing company to work for. Um, so in a day-to-day -day basis I'm collaborating with my line manager different different positions in the company and working with them closely to achieve our goals. Uh, my role has me working in payments, subcontractor. Um, I'm also involved in the tendering process, also involved in takeoffs. There's many different parts of um, the role and yeah. So why I chose the apprenticeship? Um, I chose the apprenticeship because it allowed me to study and also gain on the job experience. So I'm doing four days um, with GT and one day at college. And in that time, I'm doing all of my modules. And that's just literally just focused on the entire um, course. There's no distractions from like work. So I'm just solely focused on work. So I'm getting my good time focused on my course. And then I go back to the office and there's no worry about my my course I'm just focused on my work so it's a really nice balance and I really find for me especially it's a nice way to deliver my academic progression as well as focusing on my career yeah thanks James so just um f from my perspective if someone's on the the webinar this morning and they don't know at all what a quantity surveyor does a quantity what surveyor. Would you say? <laughs> yeah. So a quantity surveyor. So basically, on the day to day, I'm dealing with um, a variety of subcontractors right now, um, and then I'm dealing with them. I'm using different contract types, depending on what sort of contract we're using. Um, I'm using the contract to go back to them with queries, um, resolve their issues. I'm also heavily involved in the recruitment stage and the tendering process right now. Um, but yeah. Thank you. 
So we, um, as, as a tier one contractor um, or, or a main contractor, what that means um, for those who aren't familiar um, with our industry is we essentially um, are the management team that sit at the top of a construction project. So if you like, um, we, we work with our clients who have asked for the project. So, so those people who've said, okay, please can you um, build this school? Please can you build this hospital? Please can you build this road for us? And we've got three kind of key parts to our business. One is building, so that we, we build buildings. So like I say, we have, um, you know, schools, colleges, hospitals, the, the, you know, buildings. Um, <clears throat> so that's one part. Um, we have a, a huge environment business, it's a big part of our business now, which um, does a, a lot of work, but predominantly in the water sector. Um, so we do sort of water treatment works and, and that sort of thing. And then we have a highways business who build roads. So in all three parts of our business, um, we work with clients who ask us to build the projects. Um, and then we, we deliver those projects. But like I say, we are the, the main contractor, the management team, if you like, who then work with our subcontractors who who deliver the projects on our behalf. So um, <clears throat> I would say that the you know the, the quantity surveyors, the civil engineers, um, the estimators, the planners, name just a few, there's obviously a, a big variety of roles, are kind of our bread and butter. That's that that's the that's the big main roles that, that we have um, in our team. But then of course we're we're a business just like any other that requires support services that are integral to our business. We have a finance team, we have a legal team, we have a communications team, a marketing team. You know, we have all we have HR. Um, you know, we have all these all these areas of our business which are integral to making it work as well. So just as a tiny wee bit background on, I suppose, the makeup of our business and yeah. um, what that looks like. And that's why I think we're so big on collaboration because you're always working with different sectors of the industry, and no matter if like you have an issue, you always collaborate, and it's such a big part. I also don't think I spoke enough about the framework because I just thought, thought I'd say I'll give a bit more of an insight to someone that's actually doing the framework. Yeah. Um, so I've sort of um, been working through the framework. I get a, a, a booklet for myself. Um, it's for me and my line manager, but I also get a mentor. And every now, every six months I have a chat with him and we'll go through it ourselves. Um, but right now I'm ticking off like the competency sections. Um, and soon I'll be going on to my secondments because I have I think it's six I have to do, and I'll just be going to different sets of the businesses. It's not for a huge amount of time. It's just so you can gain gain a good understanding of the the other part of the industry. So, like, I'll be going over to do estimating, and then moving on to the next one, wherever that might be. And I'll be maybe a month or so with them. Yeah, great. I think what's quite nice about it is you're getting to see the different parts of our business and how it all co comes together. Yeah, especially for someone like me, because I've had, like I said, li little to no experience. So getting mm -hmm. to see how all these sort of different positions within the industry collaborate and how we're all working to get the same goal, it's really helpful because you can see why you need to work and work with them. And yeah. Great. And James, you said you've been with us for 11 months. So what modules yeah. have you done so far from the development program side of things? Um, so I've been doing uh, CDF modules, which is basically, um, so for, for me, a quantity surveyor, we have modules that not only for new starters, but also for people who have been with the company a long time. And it's sort of like a refresher just to make sure we're all doing the correct processes. And they can be tendering contracts, making sure we're getting paid on time, paying people, different con um, not contracts, different modules that to make sure we're all performing correctly and doing the right thing it's sort of a refresher but also it's also for new people coming in great yeah and just to build on your point on collaboration how how key it is to um everything i suppose that we do in all the projects and how we work um that's why collaboration is such a key theme throughout the development program as well yeah. um it, it's a skill and how to collaborate with different people um, at different levels across our organisation, whether that's client side or internal um, connections. I think collaboration and knowing how to do that um, is, is so important. So I did um, take part in the module one last year, um, which was which I don't, I don't want to give too much away, actually, but it was really enjoyable um, and very 
um, very focused on collaboration and appropriate stretch and, and working working as a team, truly working as a team to achieve an objective. So yeah, that's a pretty cool module. I've not done the, the yacht one yet um, that Harriet mentioned, but I think it's important that I do. <laughs> Um, okay, great. James, did you have anything else you wanted to to, to add before uh, we jump no. on to q &A? No, if you've got any questions, yeah. Okay. James, eh, Harriet, anything from you? Uh, nope, not from me. It looks nope. like there's lots of questions today. Okay, excellent. Yeah, we're ready for questions now, please. <laughs> Lovely. Let's get right into them. So, question from Mike. Um, how competitive is the application process? That might be one for me, I think. Um, it, is, it is quite competitive. Um, it, I suppose it depends on, on the role. So just, just to be honest, there's some roles that we have that are extremely popular, um, but some roles that are, that are less so. So it depends on the role. My advice would be, which I probably said earlier, um, but just because we receive a lot of applications, that doesn't mean that, that they're right. We're not looking for quantity. You know, we're looking for quality. Um, so just because we do get lots of applications, that doesn't mean uh, we don't want that to be off-putting, I think is what I'm trying to say. If mm -hmm. you want to join us and, and your application shows that you've got that motivation, um, it, you know, you have a reasonable chance of getting through the process. Lovely. Great. A uh, question from Jack says, uh, please, can you give examples of how he will put uh, your values into practice at Galliford? I don't mind all well unless James is going to go. Oh no, if you want to go, yeah. <laughs> so I suppose you're going to you're going to have different scenarios that you'll be involved with over the course of your trainee program, um, especially in terms of sort of collaborating with various people on your trainee scheme. Um, so there's the various modules that you have at Gallifrey Try where you're going to be working together as teams. But then, as James mentioned as well, you've got your structured training frameworks as well, where you're going to be able to put some of those values into practice. So I think you're going to find there's quite a lot of different op opportunities in terms of technical skills as well as sort of behaviours sort of collaboratively and for yourself that you're going to get across the whole experience. James might yeah. have something else as well. <laughs> no, that's what I was going to say. It's just all about the collaboration, all working together to deliver an, an excellent project. No matter what the project is, we all have the same aim and we all just want to work together as, as best as we can just to get the best outcome. Mm. Great. Just um, if I was going to add to that, is that okay? <laughs> um, one, one of our values is um, integrity. And I think that we have um, a pretty good approach to this in that we talk about doing the right thing. That's the kind of terminology that we use, doing the right thing. And it's doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do, not because someone's watching, if you like. It's making sure that we are acting in the right way, um, in a safe way, um, in a way that's true to the value of integrity but also our other values and um, to make sure that um, even if it takes longer even if it may be cost the project money we, we we make a decision because it's the right thing to do um, and i think that's something that comes out in not just on, on our live projects but just across the board and everything that we do is we talk about doing the right thing lovely great answers guys uh question from cam now can you tell us about any exciting projects or initiatives that gallifer Tri is currently working on James, what project are you on? Are you on an exciting yeah. project? <laughs> so I'm part of the um, RDP A47 scheme. So it's around Norwich area and it's an A47 dual carriageway um, because it's currently a single road and we're dual carrying all the way. Um, it's about a five mile stretch. That's the one I'm on. There's different sectors of it. So there's four schemes altogether on that road. And yeah. Um, but like I said, there's there's so many different um, sectors that we're involved in. So this is just one of them. This is just the highway section. Um, depends on what you fancy to do. Our environment yeah. business is growing quite a lot just now. Um, as I mentioned, it was mainly water, but we've recently um, acquired a couple of um, smaller companies um, in the last couple of months. So I think that it's a pretty exciting time for our environment team. Um, we've also got our carbon net zero targets. So sustain sustainability um, is a really important part of what drives us in our future goals. And we have targeted to be um, carbon and uh, net zero carbon by 2030 from our own um, <clears throat> from our own work. Um, so that's a pretty exciting time in our, in our sustainability and environment team is growing rapidly 
um, because that's a really exciting but also ambitious target that we're working towards. Mm -hmm. Also, I'm sure if you go on our website, you can actually scroll through and look at the different sectors that we're involved in. And there's some there's talks about some schemes that we've done and currently involved in. Yeah, definitely. Lovely. Um, for that, does one of you want to put a wee link in the chat just to the website? Because then that will help for yeah. our viewers while I go through the questions. Thank you. Um, question from Ron. Now is a good one. Uh, can you share any insights? on how the construction industry has changed in recent years and how Gallifrey Tri is adapting to these changes? Um, I think, oh. No, go on. <laughs> <laughs> I think from my perspective, I think it is also, you know, it's the sort of the popularity of sort of these apprenticeship and trainee programmes. Obviously, you know, from an early careers perspective, we've, we've sort of always had our sort of our graduate programmes, which have been, you know, really good and go really well um but it's sort of also branching into you know that important importance of apprenticeships um so i think you know it's changed in that respect in that you know there's a lot more sort of emphasis in looking at that other route into construction as well so i think that's probably one of the key ones a degree and um also in terms of the digital technologies that are that are changing as well so even in the last um so whilst i've been with galford for, for 10 years I've, I've only been in kind of early careers in this space for five years and um, which is still a long time and um, so in that five years i've seen the type of roles that we're looking for in an early career space change from obviously we will always have the traditional ones that i mentioned you know your your civil engineers and um, quantity surveyors all, all these these really important roles that will remain but we've started to see um, you know, we have BIM, BIM opportunities, so building information modelling opportunities. Um, we have sort of system developers and software developers that they might not have had previously in, in our industry. Um, so, so I suppose the, the, di the digital technologies that are advancing so quickly and Gallup are trying having to keep up with that. So obviously we're now looking for the skills to bring those into our team to make sure that we can keep up with that. So I think that's quite an exciting shift as well. Yeah, very exciting stuff. Um, question from Jack. Uh, again, what is the typical starting salary for an apprentice? So it varies depending on the, the level. Um, we, we always say competitive and, and we are competitive, albeit we don't truly advertise salary, but we are a um, living wage employer. So it's not, it's not minimum wage, it's living wage, so it's above that. Um, so we are truly competitive. Um, but it does vary depending on the level that we join the organisation. But what I will say that I think is a really good thing that we do is we have regular reviews. So when you join us as a trainee um, and, and or apprentice, um, we have regular reviews on salary to make sure that your um, salary is increasing in line with your, your development and how you're growing in the business. Um, and when you get to a certain level, depending on role, we do offer a company car as well. So um, we do have a kind of competitive offering in that space. Yeah, perfect. Uh, here's a good one for the, bar, uh, for the apprentices. What kind of challenges do you think apprentices face and how do you help overcome them? I think, you know, from a, an on-programme experience and, and James might sort of back me up here is obviously from the from the academic side of things from your apprenticeship you know there is obviously an academic side that you're going to have to work towards and also doing your J job as well and um, so I think it is finding that sort of nice balance which is why when we have the trainee program which I know someone had asked a question about how long it is so I'll try and answer that now if if we haven't already said it so it's a year long the Galliford Tri trainee program so that's why we try and make that hopefully a little bit fun and interactive and, and collaborative as well because you have got quite a few elements to manage as part of your program so I would say that's sort of the key thing and that's why we try and make sure we've got a lot of support throughout your program as well so that'll be your line manager and um, your mentor and then also you know us as an early careers team as well yeah just to like back you up there like so obviously you've got your day-to-day -day and then your course so it can be quite a lot on somebody um so the real thing is there's a lot of support around you and it's just you'll you'll get to understand like it's you just need to go and ask because you've got your line manager the mentor there's the hr department and if you, if you ever get in like if if course is getting too much for you or anything like that it's just literally a message that and galliford are always 
willing to help out any way they can, even if it's giving you an extra day just to focus on your work, something like that. It's just they always take the steps just to make sure you've got what you need to do and so you can work effectively. Great. Um, question from Leroy. Can you provide examples of past apprentices who have successfully completed the program and gone on to successful careers? Um, yeah, I mean, I touched on this really briefly earlier, but we've definitely had people once they... Um, so first, first of all, it's probably worth, worth saying um, all our training and apprentice roles are permanent. So you're not joining us for a set period of time while you, while you are a trainee or while you're doing your academic qualification. You join us on a full-time permanent basis. And um, so that's quite exciting because the, what that means is once you've completed your, um, your academic qualification and your um, structured training framework, sorry, it lost me for a second there, structured training frameworks, then you, you're already permanent with us, so you would be promoted at that point. I was in an event um, on Monday as part of National Apprenticeship Week with one of our, he's now assistant site manager. So he joined us, um, he actually joined us five years ago um, as part of a framework. So he's actually technically only been with Gallup for try four years, um, but he completed his level three apprenticeship. He then went on to do his level four apprenticeship. And then in September this year, so he's already been promoted to assistant site manager, but while, while he's in that new role, he's completing his degree level apprenticeship. Um, so he'll be doing kind of like James just touched upon there, he'll be doing day release. So he'll be doing four days on the job, which is amazing because he's continuing to learn and grow in that space. Um, and then he'll obviously do day, day release at university to do his, his degree level apprenticeship as well. So that's one really specific exa example of someone who's, who's um, kind of progressed through the different levels and developed within the role and been promoted internally as well, which is amazing. But we do have a few examples that are similar to that, that one was site management, but um, you know, we have different, different areas where we see similar kind of trends. Yeah, great, good stuff. Um, uh, can a question from Samira, can apprentices work on real projects and interact with clients? Definitely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, me, for example, I'm, I'm dealing with clients and I'm like I'm in contact with the clients, subcontractors or, while I'm under the apprenticeship scheme. Um, obviously, mm -hmm. when you become an apprenticeship, you work very closely with your line manager just because you've you need that support. Like I have no I had no in, like industry experience. So I didn't know the prestige and all that. So I work closely with my line manager and he sort of got me to a stage where I'm sort of confident to even now interact with them on my own without supervision. Amazing. Good on you. Great stuff. Um, question from Charlotte and I. What is the success rate of apprentices being offered full-time positions at Galford Tri? So, so technically it's 100% because you would join us on a on a permanent basis already. Mm. Um, I know that some organisations have early careers roles, which are, for example, two years or the duration of your academic qualification. We don't operate on that basis. When we, when we bring someone into our business, um, and this is, a, this is a true part of our, co our culture, if we grow and develop someone and you know we, we, we um, sort of shape them into business ready individuals, we want to keep them. <laughs> we, have a, we have a retain and gain strategy which means we want to retain the people that we've got um, and the talent that we've got across the business and develop them internally. Um, and then obviously, again, because we're a growing business, we do need to bring new people in as well. And early careers is a key part of that. So in terms of the, the chances of, um, I don't know the exact word that was used, but in terms of you know joining us on a, on a full-time basis, you already are. That's how we would welcome you into the business. Mm -hmm. Then uh, obviously, if everyone's offered, how many apprentices do you take in uh, per year? It varies every year, depending on um, business project requirements, that sort of that sort of thing. Um, this year, we are taking on, at the moment, it's about 25. But last year, I will say that we brought on, I'm now off the top of my head, I think it was 39. Does that sound about right, Harriet? I think last year we brought on 39. Yeah, yeah um, that's about right. So, so that's a wee bit, so that, that's, that's kind of approximate numbers. But yeah, we have a, a, a training and apprentice intake every year that's, that's, that's around that number. Um, and then our graduate roles um, are sitting around 100 every year. Great, good stuff. Um, a question from Jack. Uh, do you offer work experience before the apprenticeship? 
definitely yes Go on, I, it, yeah no it's at the same time so i think generally um you know we, we offer work experience as part of galliford try so if that is something that you're you're interested in in terms of doing some work experience you know it would just be sort of contacting us um directly obviously just knowing sort of what area it is that you're interested in so obviously we can place you in the right parts of the business um and yeah that is something that we we do offer if you're wanting to come for for some work experience mm -hmm. before great um question from andre does galliford try offer work sponsorship work sponsorship so i'm not sure so that mean a sponsorship in terms of right to work requirements um what what we require in terms of right to work is a uh, current right to work in the uk at the time of joining the business and um, so if you have evidence of right to work in the uk at that time or joining the business that's sufficient and um, we do have a sponsorship license but we wouldn't necessarily start someone on a sponsorship immediately. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, that answers your question. Question from Evan now. Are there, on, are there any opportunities for international travel or working on projects abroad? We're UK based. We, we, we've dabbled in the international space previously, but at the moment, and I believe according to Bill, for the foreseeable, we plan on remaining in the UK. Great, good stuff. Uh, question from Lucas here. As a QS, does the day-to-day -day tasks get quite repetitive or is every day different in some way? Um, so with that, it, it depends as you move through stages of construction. So you'll be in the early stages of construction, then you'll be moving into the construction phase. And there are certain tasks that have to be carried out each month, but there are also new tasks that align with the current project in this stage so at the early start i'll be doing a takeoff uh, just to get drawings in and then we can be going into tendering and procurement so it always changes with each stage but there are just certain tasks that just carry on throughout mm -hmm. great um here's a question from andrew andrew we are currently having tra have different trade attending from team side college hello in relation to apprenticeship opportunities, are services and trades such as bricklayers and electricians employed direct or subcontracted? Mainly subcontracted. So, so our environment business um, do have some electrical apprentice opportunities. Um, that's quite a recent change for us. Um, the, some of the more kind of trades and labour and that hands-on kind of stuff would be through our subcontractors. Um, Paddy, I don't know if you want to join in add anything to that yeah i mean i do think you know typically i mean i do know there are some parts of the business especially parts mm -hmm. that we've sort of acquired over the mm -hmm. past sort of year or so that that are sort of going more into sort of the trade um apprenticeships especially in sort of like the fabrication space and things like that so i think we are looking at sort of more of those trade base sort of as we as we go forward but yeah probably typically as megan mentioned previously it may not have been but hopefully as we sort of move forward we'll, we'll be looking at more of those mm -hmm. Great, good stuff. Um, from Donna Pride site, Kwesi. Kwesi? Um, are you a disability friendly company? How are you with your support system? Yeah, we're a um, disability competent um, employer. So, absolutely, we have a really um, inclusive environment. Um, we welcome applications from everyone. We encourage diversity. Um, so yeah, we, we would um, absolutely be supportive and make any reasonable adjustments um, if, as of when required. Great. Um, question from Rod here. So no matter what apprenticeship you are on, you would get experience of all the other parts of the bus in the structured training programme? Yeah, so as part of your structured training framework you'll be asked to get experience in specific areas so just some of them were um i think they were estimating planning purchasing so the hope is that yes you will get experience probably maybe not in all but in other areas outside of your own you'll get some more experience great uh question from anisa does it matter what subject someone is doing to go for an apprenticeship I think that would depend on possibly if I'm right, the apprenticeship that you're you're intending to study. So dependent on what mm -hmm. you study will depend on, you mm -hmm. know, what's required. So it's worth just looking at the entry requirements for the particular apprenticeship you're interested in. Mm 
that's exactly yeah. it. We would we from a gala for trial perspective, we wouldn't say you must have X Y Z, but if the course that you want to study does have minimum entry requirements, then you you would have to meet them. Mm -hmm. uh, great. How can I apply as a graduate with a master's degree? Says Ruth. Our graduate roles are open right now. Um, so if you go onto our website, all our um, graduate opportunities are, are live and you can apply directly. Um, it's, a, it's a different process than the one I talked through earlier, um, but it's a very similar online application. Um, and the top tip that I gave you um, earlier in terms of the, what motivated you to apply to Gallico Try um, applies for our grad roles for sure. Mm -hmm. What about uh, international students? How would they go about uh, applying for an apprenticeship? Um, apply in the exact same way. Um, it's still just an online application. There's no differences there. Like I say, we do require current right to work in the UK at time of joining. So as long as you have mm -hmm. that, we'd absolutely welcome your application. Great. Uh, Lucy says, can she register for next year's intake now? Next year is in 2024. It's a funny time Probably. of year to talk about next year. <laughs> um, I'm going. I'm going to flick back the slides here. Um, yeah. We have. Um, she says, "There we go." There's a QR code on the screen there, which I actually didn't call out earlier when we were talking about it, which links to our uh, trainee and apprentice talent pool. So that will capture just its really basic details: its sort of name, email address, and your area of interest, so that we've got an understanding of what sort of area um, you're interested in. Um, and what we'll do with that is we would um, keep you up to date with upcoming events and opportunities. So that's, I suppose, how you would register your interest if that's what you were looking for in terms of mm -hmm. if, if you are referring to 2024's intake, we're kind of just kicking off 2023. So I, I love your enthusiasm and we're not doing much in that space yet. But yeah, if you register, you'd be part of our talent pool. So we'd keep you keep in touch. Great. Uh, question from me now for uh, your apprentice. Um, once uh, you started to join the company and there was this support system with you, um, how did you feel, or did you feel differently um, how you thought your apprenticeship was going to uh, lay out? Or did you always have that uh, set, I'm going to do this, 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 I'm going to progress to this? Well, that, that's, that's the beauty of the, the this development framework because it shows what I have to do to sort of move forward in my trainee career. Um, mm -hmm. It outlines the competencies I need to achieve as well as completing the secondments and it helps me and my manager track how I'm getting on because there's so it'll be it'll be different for each sort of um, person and then you can just track how you're getting on and it just it helps you see how you're getting on moving forward if you're progressing where you're not progressing where you need to put a bit more emphasis on so yeah mm -hmm. it just really helped me especially I use it all the time um, I got a review of my manager yesterday, which I looked for a seed, what I could tick off, what I couldn't. And then we just realized I need to do a bit more work here. So like this week, we're going to spend a bit more time doing the, the area I haven't done much on. Very nice. Yeah. Good stuff. Now, what a, um, sort of stick with the same uh, theme. What are some of the values that you've taken out from an apprenticeship that you like you can obviously use day to day? Like we were talking to some yesterday and they were saying how they've improved in public speaking, obviously, and their confidence. But what about yourself? Um, definitely that. Um, like today, uh, a bit nervous. <laughs> um, <I> can tell. <laughs> um, but also collaboration um, is such an important part in this industry and working with the different areas of the business to achieve the outcome is it's one of the biggest takeaways I take. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, now, for all of you, is when, uh, well, the first time, say the first time you just joined the company, um, what did you expect for your career path from then on? And how has that changed to you now? Sure. Oh, go oh, on, James, you go first. first. No, you go first. Well, Obviously, new to the industry, I, I wasn't too sure on how it worked, but the framework um, has allowed me to see the, the career progression. Um, so it see, shows me what I've got to do to reach that next step as assistant QS, and then just shows you the career progression, which I found really useful, and it helps me outline what I need to do to achieve my goals in my career. Great, good stuff. I'll go. <laughs> 
Um, mine is going to be the longest because I've been here 10 years. Um, so when I joined, um, I was a graduate who was clueless on <laughs> what I wanted to do. Um, <laughs> your dog had it. Um, so I... Um, I joined, I joined in for our investments team, so part of our business, which is a gala for try investments. I joined that part of team in, in an admin role. Um, I did that for, I was being opportunistic. I'd heard about the company and I was interested and I'd heard they were really progressive. So I thought I'll join, I'll see what happened. That worked out well for me. So I did that admin role for about a year and a half. Um, and then 2014, gala for try were um, official suppliers to the Raider Cup. And it was up very in Glen nice. Eagles. Yeah, it was very nice. And um, so I managed to get myself a visa condiment in, in the marketing team there. And I was involved in the Raider Cup project, which was really exciting. And I got to go and that was really cool. And then that came to an end, um, obviously following following the event in 2014. Um, and at that point, they found me something different in supply chain. Um, so I was supply chain development manager for a few years Um where I rolled out um, a sort of approach to how we work with our supply chain. So as we mentioned earlier, our subcontractors are really important to our business because we work so closely with them to deliver our projects. And um, so how we work with them and how we um, share our values with them is, is integral in the, the, the relationships and the collaboration that we have there. So I rolled out a um, kind of strategy called Advantage Through Alignment on how we work with them. And that kind of came to an end and that's when I jumped over to early careers. Um, in 2018. Um, I've also had two mat leaves in that time, so I have, I have two children. <laughs> um, so my my 10 years at Gallifer has been really varied, really progressive, and I found that they do kind of look after you. I talked about um, retaining and gaining, that it's a, it's a genuine approach. They, they want to promote people from within, they want to train you, they want to develop you. Um, and my experience over the last 10 years has been a, a true reflection of that. Amazing to hear. Mine's probably going to be in contrast quite short to Megan's. Um, so I've um, been with Gallifer Try a, a few months now, but prior to that, I um, have worked in sort of construction industries before. Um, so I suppose from my perspective, I can almost just talk from a, a learning and development team point of view. Um, and, you know, just looking generally at sort of our graduates and apprentices that we've got and sort of how they've progressed through through their careers. Um, and I think just generally sort of the support and opportunities that are available, um, you know, and just making sure that people get to where they want to be. Um, and, you know, as James has mentioned, you know, with the support they've got on offer um, is really great. And it's just a really, you know, it's, I think it's my third one. I think I was talking to Megan about this the other day, third month here. So um, just generally how lovely and supportive everybody is. Um, and it does just feel like one team, which is, you know, makes it quite a nice place to work. Yeah. Good. Great answer. I don't think the animals were very happy about that one. Oh, you know, they've gone the whole call without kicking off. Could you, like, could you hear my cat? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I didn't think she was that loud. Oh, funny. Well, it's okay because they can all get fed now. It, we have <laughs> finished our session. That is all time we, we have time for. Thank you very much to the Galfer Tri team for joining us, taking through their offerings, sharing their experiences, and answering you and my questions. I hope you all found it insightful and useful. This is recorded, remember, so we'll be on our website and our YouTube within the foreseeable future. So there are, um, if you want to check them out, feel free. Do you have any final words of advice uh, for our viewers, guys? Um, for, from my perspective, um, a, a, apply and be yourself um, and just tell us why you've chosen Gallup for Try. Amazing. M mine would just be to, you know, research everything you know have a look at the apprenticeship websites you know see what apprenticeships are on offer um, and a lot of the questions that have been asked in terms of entry requirements and things like that you can find that on the institute for apprenticeships as well to sort of look at the various different things that are on offer so it's good just to do do some research as well good yeah yeah it might be the same just do a bit of background research for when you apply um yeah and just best of luck amazing thank you very much guys Thanks. Hope you Thanks. Have a good one. Bye. Thank you. Bye. See you. Bye.